Today we're going to review the Point Zero Energy Titan and this is a solar generator on steroids and the reason that I, I'm so excited to finally review this thing is that they have made a list of things that I hate about solar generators and they verified it with me and they were like alright we're going to fix everything that you've ever complained about and I'm pretty sure that they actually have. This thing rocks. But this is actually an evaluation model. This is pre-production. So we're gonna run over the features, but I can't really give a recommendation because I'm not sure like how long these will last for, the quality of materials, how well the inverter will run after 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a year. So we're just gonna run through some of the stats and kind of introduce it. Because for me to give a full recommendation is nearly impossible with solar power system equipment until I've actually tested it for a long time. So let's talk about this unit. It is completely modular. On top, we have the inverter and solar charge controller and DC converter and charge circuitry all in this box right here. And then below it, we have lithium battery packs. And you can remove these from each other and you can stack them as large as you want. And each of these is around 35 pounds and you can detach them and lift them off each other and they connect with an Anderson connector. And how these battery packs and inverter modules connect to each other is with these little hinges and latches. And so this system is heavy and large. So this is built for a stationary backup system for like a house. And this system is not designed to feed the distribution AC panel for your house. It's more of a backup system in the sense that you would run AC extension cords out to like your fridge and other appliances. Now that we understand the specified application for this system, let's talk about the outputs on the front. You have a screen and you have an on and off button. And then you have DC 12 volt outputs on the front and then you have two inverter outputs. Each one can handle 15 amps from each three receptacles. And how we turn those on is with this button. So we have an AC inverter and DC converter on and if you push it up, the screen will turn on and will tell you how many watts is coming out of all of them. And it will also tell you how much is going in if you have solar panels connected. And then if you want to power not the inverter but only the DC converter output, you press it down and then the screen will stay on and these will stay on but the inverter will be off. And this is what the screen looks like. So we have a nominal battery voltage of 28.7 volts and this shows us how many amps is going in or out. And this also tells us how many watts is going in and out and also how long we can run this load for with our battery capacity. And this is a state of charge meter with a coulomb sensor and then or a shunt. And then we have the percent of battery left available. And I almost forgot to talk about the RV30 amp plug. So get this, with the Energy Apex and Kodiak, you can only discharge at a rate of 550 watts continuous. With the Titan, you can do 3000 out of this plug and you can pull the full 30 amps. So it's an actual usable RV plug. And so the front of it is very simple. We have all of the outputs right here, a screen and a button. On the side is where we charge it. And these are all of the input terminals, but there are no stickers because this is a pre-production evaluation model. So over here we have the solar input with Anderson power pull connectors and we have two of them. And the reason we have two is because there's two separate MPPT solar charge controllers and you can connect 145 volts open circuit to each one and at 30 amps you can push a thousand watt array through each individual receptacle. So this system can actually charge pretty quickly with two batteries if you have 2000 watts of solar. Now the next input terminal is AC chargers and you can connect two 600 watt chargers for a total charging capability of 1200 watts. So this thing can charge very quickly off of a wall outlet. And let's just plug those in to see what it looks like. And that's what it looks like when they're plugged in. And this is an interesting plug. If the battery is over discharged or in safety mode, you can connect a car cigarette lighter adapter or a small solar panel. And it actually has a boost converter. It takes 12 volts and boosts it up to the nominal pack voltage of 24 to 28 or 29 volts. So this is very interesting. And then over here we have an input terminal for battery expansion. So if you want to have AGM batteries connected to this, you will connect them right here. You need a battery with a nominal voltage of around 24 volts and with a charge and discharge curve that's similar to NMC or nickel magnesium cobalt oxide or what they're using inside. 
but you could use in an emergency situation pretty much any battery with 24 volts or you could just series connect to you know car batteries and connect it to here so you have lots of options and this is what the back of the unit looks like it's just metal this is the air intake and then we have two fans on the back and then on this side we have two fans pushing air out and what's really cool is that they actually listen to when I said the 12 volt regulated output because the voltage is 13.8 volts. They have a step down converter from a 24 volt battery and it outputs 13.8 volts. That means any 12 volt appliance will run flawlessly with these cigarette lighter adapters. You can also charge this system off of a car cigarette lighter adapter. Now the next thing we should talk about is this battery pack. It's a 24 volt NMC or nickel manganese cobalt oxide variant. It's a very common just lithium ion battery. And what's interesting is they rate this for two kilowatt hours or 2000 watt hours, but the true capacity is 2200 watt hours. And the reason they do this and reduce it and derate it is so that they can hit larger charge cycle life numbers. So instead of getting 500 to 1000 cycles that this NMC um, chemistry is rated for, they can pull off 2000 charge cycles or more because they're not charging all the way up or all the way down. So if you want something to last a long time with this chemistry, this is how you do it. I would prefer lithium iron phosphate, obviously, because I love them but because they want the packs small enough so people can lift them and have a lot of energy density and they're cheap cells, that's why they're going with this chemistry. But I think all battery manufacturers and producers should always derate their batteries. Just like Battleborn, Point Zero Energy says that they have 2000, but they actually have 2200. And that's just smart to do. It's good business practice. We keep finding other batteries where they lie and it's not okay. And the charge cycle life will suffer anyways. So yeah, I like when companies do that. So there was a lot to talk about for this thing, but overall, everything on the spec sheet is perfect. 3000 watt inverter, it's scalable, two kilowatt hour packs, you can back up your house with it. I mean, serious power here. So yeah, enough talking about the specifics, let's test it out and see how well it works. Now we're gonna do a capacity test. We're gonna see how long it can run this heat gun for. 3.59 kilowatt hours, you guys. 3.6. And so now it's at zero percent and we're gonna turn it off. And now we need to charge it up. Jesus. <laughs> this thing is crazy heavy. So now I've connected three 100 watt solar panels in series. So we have an open circuit voltage of 60 volts and we are charging at 220 watts during winter. And we also have 246 watts going in and 216 watts at the battery. So you can figure out the MPPT converter efficiency with those two numbers. Now we're gonna use two 24 volt panels in series, and this is like 540 watts. And it takes about 20 seconds for it to start charging, and we're pulling 320 watts, and it's rising. Now we're pulling 394 watts. So now we're spraying the solar panels with water to increase their output. And check it out, we're pulling 433 watts. This battery is depleted, so I'm gonna leave it out here for a few hours and let it charge. And I was just thinking about it, and the Titan would work perfect on a hand truck cart like this. This would fit it, and you could move it around anywhere you want. Now the Titan is in the shade, and we're charging at 439 watts, and it says on here that it'll take seven hours. And right now we are at 1%. So I'm gonna let it charge all day long. So now the initial testing does look good. But let's talk about solar generators and how to tell if you should buy one or not. First of all, you have multiple components from various places in the world all slammed together in a single box. So it's very hard for me to recommend any solar generator on the market when you just don't know how well it will work over the next year or so. And these are designed to work for 10 or 20 years. And I think a lot of people that are gonna buy specifically this one 
are not going to be cycling it every day. You will have people buying these for like cabins and boats and RVs, and those people will cycle it a lot. But I think that this one will be sold a lot to the prepper market. Absolutely. So doomsday and prepper type people that want to have backup sources of power if everything goes to crap. And the reason they're going to do that is you can buy it with an EMP proof bag. So if that event did occur, you would still have power. But to know if a product is going to work in the next 10 or 20 years and it's just been released, it's really hard to say. But what I really like is that companies are actually building better systems. We keep on complaining and guess what? Look at this. They fixed like all the problems that I complained about. Even having 13.8 volts at the output receptacle, there's not a single other one on the market that does that. There's the Jackery at 13.2, there's the Blue Eddy at 12.3 volts, but now we've got 13.8 with a 20 amp fuse in a 3000 watt inverter. So this thing is really good on paper, but now I'm just so scared and so hesitant because you never know how good it will actually perform. And so before buying something like this, I think you guys need to look into the warranty and how long the company has been around for. I'm actually not sure how long this company has been around for, but I would research it if you're curious about buying this. If this thing does work and the quality of components can handle the test of time, People should be buying this because it has everything that we want. 2,000 watt array, 3,000 watt inverter, huge battery, you can scale it. That's incredible. Tell me a single other one on the market that can do that. But we just don't know yet. So please, take my words with a grain of salt. This might fail miserably in a month or it might be the best thing ever. Who knows? But I'm really glad I got to test it. And of course the company sends these out because they want free exposure, but I am pretty surprised when something actually works as advertised. So if you guys are interested in this unit, they are having a pre-sale. I personally do not like having pre-sales at all for any solar product because you just don't know how well it will work. But if you guys are interested, I will have an affiliate link below and you can pre-purchase it and they'll be shipping in January or February. So if you guys actually really want one, and I know a lot of people want this thing, um, please look into the warranty first and look into the company and try to make an educated decision from that. But I will have an affiliate link below. So if you're interested in it, check it out. If not, leave it alone. And I will come back to this in like the next six months. I'm going to get my own unit that I can test over a long duration. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Just give a brief introduction, do a couple of tests, and I hope you guys like this video. Please let me know in the comment section what you guys want to see next because I don't want to do product reviews all the time. I want to do the educational videos, but they never get many views. So please let me know. And also check out the forum, diysolarforum.com. It's free for everyone, and we have tons of people on there now, so it's a lot of fun. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.